One eye, two eyes, and three eyes. In a land far, far away, there was an old woman who lived with her three daughters. The eldest daughter was one-eyed. The middle daughter had three eyes, and the youngest daughter had two eyes. Their mother, the old woman, loved the oldest two the most. She would do whatever they wanted. Thank you so much, mother. The youngest daughter was always given the chores and housework, even while they told her she was useless and incompetent. And they didn't even invite her to their dinner table. Mom, Two Eyes doesn't deserve to eat at this table with us because she can't do anything right. But I'm... So, the mother did not let her two-eyed daughter eat with them at the table. She was given only the leftover food after everyone left the table. Nevertheless, she kept her heart kind and helpful. One day, her one-eyed and three-eyed older sisters came to the girl with two eyes. They insulted her and threw dirty laundries on her. You didn't wash these clothes well. Watch them again. <laughs> two eyes left the house crying. She went to the river to wash the laundry again. <laughs> Why are my sisters treating me like this? What did I ever do to them? <laughs> While the two-eyed girl was weeping, a fairy appeared before her. The fairy dazzled the two-eyed girl with her shining outfit, but she kept her face hidden from her. Why are you crying, two-eyed beautiful girl? Because I'm the youngest in the house. My mother and sisters say I'm useless, and they hate me, and only give me scraps from the dinner table. <laughs> oh, don't be sad, pretty girl. Look, I have a present for you. This is a magic wand. If you make a wish and wave the magic wand three times, it will come true. When the two-eyed girl made a wish, a dinner table appeared. The table was filled with delicious food. Ah, look at these dishes, all warm and fresh. Two eyes had been hungry for days, so she started to eat from the food on the table. When you're done eating, you only need to wave the wand twice, beautiful two-eyed girl. Remember, only twice. The fairy disappeared without showing her face. The two-eyed girl, after having a good meal, waved the wand twice. And the table vanished. Oh, I'm finally full. I'm so happy. But I have to hide this wand from my sisters and my mother, or they will destroy me for it. The two-eyed girl returned home using the wand as a walking stick. She noticed the leftover food on the table, but she didn't eat it because she was full. Two Eyes took her walking stick and went out again every day. She went to the water's edge, waved her wand, and ate as much as she wanted. But one day, when she returned home, her older sisters, One Eye and Three Eyes, noticed a change in their younger sister, Two Eyes. Why does Two Eyes smile every time she goes out and returns? And she doesn't eat the scraps we leave her. The next day, the jealous sisters followed her when Two Eyes went out. After a while, two eyes came to the water's edge. She made a wish 
and waved the wand three times. And a table full of delicious food appeared. Seeing this, the sisters were astonished. Ah, so she fills her stomach with delicious food every day. And she doesn't share it with us either. One Eye and Three Eyes ran home and told their mother what they saw. The mother could not believe what she heard, and she was very angry. Everyone hid before Two Eyes returned home. As soon as the girl entered the house, her mother came up to her and took the wand in her hand and broke it in half. Why did you do that? You were feasting on delicious food while we sat at home starving. No more food for you in this house. Two Eyes was so upset that she took the broken wand and went outside crying. At that moment, the mysterious good fairy appeared before her again. Don't cry, two-eyed beautiful girl. Take the pieces of the stick and bury them under the moonlight. You will smile again. The mysterious fairy disappeared before the two eyes could see her face. Two eyes went and did what the fairy said. The next day, a tree with silver leaves and golden fruit grew where she had buried the pieces of the stick. It was so majestic and bright that everyone could see it. Two Eyes' mother and sisters wanted to go to the tree and collect some fruit from it. But whenever the sisters reached out for the fruit, the tree branches were lifted up. Seeing this, Two Eyes came to them immediately. Maybe I can pick a fruit from this beautiful tree. Huh, we couldn't even get it. How will you succeed? Two Eyes stretched out her arms towards the tree. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. After the kind words, the tree bent its branches in front of the Two Eyes so that she could easily take the fruit. Two Eyes wanted to give some of the fruit to her mother and sisters. But they were crazy with jealousy. Oh, well, I can do that. Watch. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. But the tree did not respond to what one eye and three eyes had said. <laughs> How is it that this tree only obeys two eyes' orders? At that moment, a handsome knight approached, galloping on his horse. Get out of here, two eyes. Hide behind the bushes. Do not embarrass us with your selfishness. Poor two eyes obeyed and hid behind the bushes with the fruit in her arms. When the knight came near the silver-leaved and golden-fruited tree, he stared in amazement. <laughs> wow! If the owner of this magnificent tree would give me a silver branch, I would make her the happiest person in the world. We are the owners of this tree, sir. I can give you a silver branch. One Eye and Three Eyes jumped and jumped to pluck a branch from the tree, but in vain. They couldn't even touch a leaf. You said this tree belongs to you? Then why can't you pluck even a single fruit from it. Two Eyes wanted to come out and share her fruits with the knight, but she was afraid of her mother and sisters, so she stayed put and started to cry. <laughs> and then the mysterious fairy appeared again. Beautiful Two-Eyed Girl, take the leaf of the tree and put it in your heart. Then face the knight without any fear. The two-eyed girl did as the fairy told her, and her worn-out outfit turned into a bright, sparkling dress. She immediately came out of the bush where she was hiding and faced the knight with the fruit in her arms. 
the knight was fascinated by the beauty of two eyes, and he couldn't take his eyes off her. I can give you a silver branch with golden fruit, sir. I want to make you the happiest woman in the world, beautiful eyed girl. Will you marry me? Two Eyes immediately accepted the knight's marriage proposal, and they embraced each other. Seeing this, the jealous sisters and mother apologized to Two Eyes. We thought you were incompetent because you were younger than us. But you are pure-minded and kind-hearted. Sorry, sister. Two Eyes forgave her sisters and mother. The silver tree is now yours. You can get as many fruit as you want from it. After these beautiful words of Two Eyes, the mysterious fairy appeared on the top of the silver leaf tree and showed her face for the first time. Two Eyes was very surprised to see that the fairy had three eyes and realized that people only need a good heart to do good, no matter how different they look. Then Two Eyes and the Knight got on a horse and rode off to eternal happiness. With her golden hair, always smiling face, Pollyanna was a ten-year-old little girl spreading joy around her. But she had lost her parents when she was really young and was left all alone. For some time, she stayed in the orphanage. After some time had passed, her wealthy aunt accepted to look after her. Her aunt, Miss Polly, prepared the small attic for Pollyanna. The housemaid, Nancy, was really happy about this. Hopefully our little guest will be successful in cheering up grumpy Miss Polly. When arrived at home, Pollyanna was crying with happiness. She hugged her auntie around her neck, but her auntie was somewhat serious. She took Pollyanna and showed her to her room. Pollyanna was stunned when she saw the size and the wealth of this house. Her auntie showed her room in the attic. This is your room and dinner starts at 6pm, don't forget. Pollyanna liked her room very much. Having seen all the other rooms in the house, Pollyanna did not bother to think once as to why her auntie gave her the room in the attic. Right at six o'clock, Miss Polly sat at the dinner table, but Pollyanna had not arrived yet. Where is this girl? Would you like me to go and call her, Miss Polly? No. After dinner, Miss Polly went over to her room and noticed the room was empty. She immediately went over to the garden to tell the gardener that she was missing. The gardener, on the other hand, pointed over to a rock on the hill. She was over there. In a rush, Nancy ran over to Pollyanna and together they made their way to the villa. Didn't matter what the situation was, Pollyanna always managed to keep a positive attitude about everything. This left Nancy amazed. She asked Pollyanna what the secret to this was. The glad game. My father taught me this. When I was young, a very helpful lady once sent us crutches. When I asked as to why, she said, so that as long as they were in our sight, we would be able to appreciate the fact that we didn't need to use them and be glad. It is because of that day that whenever me and Daddy feel like we're in doubt, we think of that day and we find a reason to be glad. Further into the evening, Pollyanna was in her room, on her bed, crying hysterically. Yeah, father, my father who lives amongst the angels. I'm trying to play our game, you know that. But if you were stuck in an attic, in the dark, sitting all by yourself, you too would find it hard to be glad. The following day, Pollyanna went downstairs to the garden and hugged her auntie. Beloved auntie, this morning I am so grateful to be alive. 
Is that how we say good morning? After having said this, Aunt Polly turned around and left. Watching them from afar, the old gardener's eyes went watery. He then went over to Pollyanna and told her how much she looked like her mother. Knowing that the gardener knew her mother made her happy. As time went on by, Pollyanna's life at the villa had gotten better. She would have her breakfast, then straight after, start doing her homework with her auntie. And then after lunch, she would have free time until six o'clock. She would even do some of the grocery shopping for the house. One day in the town, she saw a man wearing a long black coat with a cylinder-shaped hat. Although she tried being friends with him, she couldn't make much sense out of what the man was saying to her. Some time had passed and she saw the same man again. She tried to talk to him once again. This time round, he too made conversation with her. Nancy was in shock because although the man, I mean Mr. Pendleton, was very wealthy, he lived in a huge house all by himself and never ever did he speak to anyone. The following day, Pollyanna went home with a very weak dog. Miss Polly didn't say a word. But the following day after that one, she brought a boy home and Miss Polly was extremely cross with her. Enough, Pollyanna. Amongst all the other hideous things you've done, this is by far the worst. As if it wasn't enough that you brought all the cats and dogs from the streets, now you're bringing beggars to my house. I'm not a beggar, madam. After having said that, the boy rushed out of the house. But Pollyanna was determined to save this kid from the streets. In September, Pollyanna started school. It didn't take long for Pollyanna to like her school. One day, during a visit, Mr Pendleton asked Pollyanna not to leave and if she could stay with him. Of course, it was impossible for Pollyanna to give an answer. Mr Pendleton explained everything to Pollyanna. Back when I was young, I fell in love with your mum. I loved her dearly. But your mum never loved me back. Then soon later, she married your father and they moved away from the city. Ever since that day, Mr Pendleton always seemed to be upset towards the world around him. He would always have a long face. But having Pollyanna look like her mother with her sincere looks made it possible for him to look at the world in a more positive manner. This way, by having Pollyanna next to him all the time, he would have a reason to live. Moon next to me, and together we will be happy. You can see me as a father, and I'll see you like a daughter. But although her auntie didn't show it, she knew she loved her very much. And she didn't want to leave her auntie. She didn't know how to tell this to Mr Pendleton. At last, she found a solution. She wanted Mr Pendleton to take Jimmy in, the kid her aunt refused to look after, and thought this way both Mr Pendleton and Jimmy would be happy and Pollyanna could visit them both more often. Mr Pendleton asked for them to come together the following week. But after a few days, a very unfortunate accident happened. A car hit Pollyanna. After opening her eyes a day later in the hospital, Pollyanna was very happy to be alive. She didn't want her auntie to leave her side. She was living the happy moment of her auntie calling her my darling. A few days later, Pollyanna had left the hospital, but she could no longer use her legs. When Mr Pendleton visited Pollyanna, he told Miss Polly about his offer to Pollyanna and how she rejected the offer due to her auntie. After hearing this story, Miss Polly's love suddenly grew much bigger for her. Just so that her niece would be happy, she would allow the cats and dogs to go up to her room. She would allow anything that made Pollyanna happy. The doctor 
doctor that they had been waiting for from the city came one week late. After Pollyanna's checkup, the doctor had to give the bad news. Unfortunately, this young girl will not be able to walk. Oh no! After hearing this, Miss Polly began to cry and soon after fainted. After hearing her auntie's voice, Pollyanna began to cry hysterically. Right then, everyone was waiting for bitter, sad days. Everyone was shedding away their tears for her. Pollyanna began to tell everyone that visited her about the glad game. In order to make Pollyanna happy, Mr Pendleton decided to adopt Jimmy. When Pollyanna heard the good news, she was so happy. Miss Polly couldn't believe that she was the only one that didn't know the glad game. Once she began talking to Nancy, she found out about everything. She then quickly rushed over to Pollyanna. So, the glad game. From now on, we will play this game together. Yay! This is by far the best news, Aunt Polly! Meanwhile, Mr Pendleton's doctor wanted to see Pollyanna. But there was one problem. Due to an argument they had many years ago with Miss Polly, he hadn't stepped a foot into that house for 15 years. In the end, both ends had come to an agreement and they took her to a hospital out of the city. Mr Pendleton's doctor looked after Pollyanna and said that there is hope. A few months had passed, Auntie Polly received a letter from Pollyanna. Dearest Aunt Polly, I have great news. My therapy has ended with great results. At last, I can walk. The doctors here say that I can return home soon. Wish I could walk the way back. Oh, how happy I am. Everything makes me happy. In fact, I'm even happy that I couldn't use my legs for some time. Because if it didn't happen, I would never appreciate them as much as I do now. Hoping to see you soon. With love, Pollyanna. <laughs> <laughs> 